Well, if we come down from a loft, what we'll find out is that those, the pressure gradient or those isobars don't always flow from, um, flow along lines of latitude. We're going to see that there's definitely some curviness in the isobars. Specifically now, I'm kind of returning to something we've looked at before. Near the Earth's surface, we can have a central low, and then these are isobars drawn around my central low or a central high pressure. And usually these isobars are a little bit more spread out, aren't they? Um, less of a pressure gradient force there. So when winds then flow between these isobars, we don't, talk, we don't call that geostrophic wind like we do aloft, we call that gradient wind. Um, and we are going to see, and I'll kind of talk you through these two scenarios, we're going to call these lows, we're going to call these cyclones. And there's a slide coming up to show you this. We're going to call these highs, central highs, um, anticyclones. Okay, but um, I'm going to show you that basically they, uh, they follow the rules we've already talked about, the fact that air will want to move from a high to a low pressure, and then in the northern hemisphere it's going to be deflected to the right. So we'll kind of talk, look at those gradient winds as they curve around those cyclone and anticyclone. So this would be not necessarily aloft winds. These are closer to the Earth's surface. So we'll start with the central low pressure. And so there we go. On a weather map, you might see something that looks like that. These black lines are isobars. So if it's a central low pressure, we should expect that those isobars to increase. So there's 1,004 millibars, 1,008 millibars, 1,012 millibars, all right? So what that creates then is a tendency of air to want to go from the outward in. Does that make sense? From a high pressure to the low pressure. All right, so here's our chunk of air headed in. Now notice that the Coriolis force is going to deflect it to the right. So can you see the deflection to the right? Let's see if we kind of track, maybe compare this one. Can you see kind of the deflection to the right? More and more deflection to the right. Okay, so at the point where, here's more and more deflection to the right. At the point where, and then we kind of reach it here, don't we? Where that wind is flowing kind of between the isobars. It's flowing, uh, what, parallel to the isobars. Um, at that point, we have gradient wind. And what it's going to do is it's kind of in a groove at that point, and it's going to stick between those isobars. See that? Okay. Notice that as it sticks between those isobars, notice the direction it's going. It is going counterclockwise, and it's forced to go counterclockwise. Around a central low pressure, you'll always see wind going counterclockwise because of the uh, tendency of the air to go from the... Um, from outside the central low towards the central low, and it's being deflected to the right. So some general rules about a cyclone. Okay, movement is counterclockwise. We call this flow, anytime anything moves counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere, we call that cyclonic movement. Um, just kind of like you saw a little bit ago, um, these low pressures are associated with troughs. And one of the things is that uh, we can you see where actually we generally have air converging at the center. And actually when we talked about um, a way to create a central um, high pressure, we said we could have air converging. All right, switching gears. Now let's talk about a, again, now these would be kind of surface sort of uh, pressure systems, um, not aloft. So if we have a central high pressure looking at the isobars uh, next to our central high, then they must be going down. So for instance, the closest one would be 1,024 millibars, 1,020 millibars, 1,016 millibars. It's going down. Okay, that would tend to mean that our pressure gradient uh, force 
would want to go from this high outwards in all directions, basically. So if we look at just one little chunk of air, this is our one little chunk of air wanting to move outwards, notice that it is going to be deflected to the right. More and more deflection, okay? So it keeps getting deflected to the right, deflected to the right, until it is moving parallel with the isobars. And at that point, we have um, gradient wind. And notice it's going to stay between those isobars. And so uh, what we end up with is air flowing in a clockwise direction around a central high. And it has to do with the rules we've talked about, about air going from a high to a low pressure and then being deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere. So some rules about an anticyclone. Movement will be clockwise in the northern hemisphere. Now, I didn't write it on the slide, but this is confined. Um, uh, anticyclones move counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. But in the northern hemisphere, movement is clockwise. Movement that's clockwise, we call it anticyclonic. Um, these central high pressures are associated with ridges aloft. And we'll see that air is diverging. So actually, air is from the central low pressure. And we're going to have to kind of talk about how the central low pressure, excuse me, the central high pressure stays so high because air is diverging or leaving, okay, the center.